Thanks for joining us once again. We're talking about why women cheat. Now, so far we've heard that there's an attention factor and uh, needs that aren't being met. But to find out some other reasons, we're going to the telephone line for more insight. Joining us is Christy Nightingale. She's the founder of Premier Match, a matchmaking firm in New York, Washington, D.C., and Philadelphia. Christy, good to have you with us. Hi, thanks for having me. So tell me about another reason why women cheat. It's called the revenge factor. Do you ever see that? <laughs> Yes, I have. Um, I, because I interview women at length and we go over all the different reasons um, why they're single, many of which have been divorced, I ask them, um, you know, if, well, I ask them why they split up with their ex husbands, and many of them have said that because there were affairs that went on in the relationship, and, and they admit to me that they've been also involved in affairs. Now, do they find that to be satisfactory, or are they regretful after they do it? I think when if, if the reason is revenge, I don't feel that they are regretful. I think that they're more. Um, I mean, that the marriage was basically in ruins anyway. They they and they all state that they were aware of affairs that were going on um, with their husband, and they just got angrier and angrier, and so they ended up. It was it, it was basically like an eye for an eye. Okay. You know? What about boredom? Does boredom play a role in why women particularly seek comfort outside the marriage? Yes, yes. I find that um, a lot of women have said that they they just grew apart. That they were really bored in their relationships. They basically were living parallel lives. And, um, you know, an affair became exciting. You know, it was kind of like an adrenaline rush. Right. It's exciting until you get caught, right? Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, um, and, and in certain circumstances, I mean, I have had uh, uh, female clients that after they got divorced, obviously, that they stated that they were involved in a lot of different affairs because they found them mildly addictive. Okay. Mm -hmm. Christy Nightingale, thank you so much for your perspective. No, you're welcome. Good to have you with okay, us. Okay, thank you. One question that I have for our guest here in the studio is, do you ever run across women who involve themselves in an extramarital affair or an affair outside of the relationship and then find themselves saying, I can't believe I'm doing this. I, I, I would never do, do this. This yeah. is not me. Do you ever run across that? Yeah, I have plenty of clients where that's been the situation. and. Even as much as you can think about the consequences ahead of time, they mean so much more when you actually face them in real time. And that's part of why they might be in the office of saying, I, I don't know why I'm here or why I did this, but now I'm feeling the weight of it. And the, I love your, <laughs> your analogy, <laughs> cheesecake. It's cheesecake. You know what? If you substitute partner for pound cake, it's like, I know I shouldn't have this. It's, I'm going to wear it tomorrow. I'm going to be bloated. It's not going to agree with me. It, but just one little bite, next thing you know, the whole pie is gone. Oh, <laughs> so what happens if you have engaged in an adulterous relationship, an affair, can, can you move on from it? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we would agree with that. Definitely. I well, mean, you guys wouldn't have jobs if somebody right. wasn't trying well, to move on from it. We, you know, we're not, we don't wave the magic wand like many people think we do, you know, to fix, you know, some of these issues in a relationship. But again, as we spoke about earlier, if the two people are invested and they want to work on their relationship, I mean, that's really the key. Do you want to work on the relationship? And how damaged is the relationship from what has happened? You have to both in that want relationship. It though, right? Because if one just can't get oh, yeah. over the affair, then and it takes you time. just have to call it quits. Right? Both, both have to want it, but mm -hmm. to understand that both people have a process. The thing that I've noticed is that couples have had a better relationship, the best relationship, if they're willing to work through it after an affair well, or cheating. And also, Georgia puts the honesty mm -hmm. to the yeah. top because I know that the best predictor of successful relationships is how well, you resolve conflict. Mm -hmm. it. It's not how much you laugh together, the kinds of things you like to do, or, or your love life. It's really when you have a difficult situation, there's a conflict, how well and how capably can you resolve that? Well, I would think yeah. trust would be a huge issue yeah. after an affair, regardless of who the infidel was. Mm -hmm. So you have to be patient to rebuild that trust. Is it fair to look over someone's shoulder with every email or, or check whatever text is coming in? I mean, is that... Is, is that a fair reaction for the person who was wronged? One of the things I tell my um, clients is stop making the past the present. So if you continue to do the same things that um, allow your partner to think that you're 
you're still doing something that you shouldn't be doing, secretive texts, secretive emails, um, going outside to talk on the phone, I mean, the list goes on and on and on, you are making the past the present. So, I mean, they're gonna, their trust issues aren't going to get resolved. Okay. And also, not only with trust, but the technology. It's like, you know, back in the day, you could make a phony phone call, but now everything is all, all caught on the technology. Mm -hmm. I think the true test of somebody's character is when nobody is watching. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, you can fly right and sit up straight when you know you're being monitored <laughs> and watched, but when nobody's around, that really will be the true basis of what you're made of. Great right? advice. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Stop making the past your present. Yeah. So if you're contemplating, if you're having that little flirtation at work, if you're sending suggestive emails or, or secretive phone calls, what would you suggest, George? You know, what I tell people is that you have to really change those behaviors. Consider the consequences. If you continue that, you will get caught. Uh, there's hardly anyone statistically that can have an affair that won't get caught sooner or later. You know what? Okay. I call it the I-95 smell test. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly. <laughs> that. Okay. Before sending a picture or a text or even an email, I think if the whole world could see what I'm about to send on a billboard in I-95 and I'm okay with it, I'll hit send. All right. Very great nice. advice. Yeah. On that note, Ruthie Weisberg, great to have you here. Thank I'm going to remember that yeah. cheesecake analogy the rest of my life. George James and Deborah Leno, thank you. Her book is called 11 Reasons Why Women Cheat, and she has shared most of those with us here. If you want more information, you can get it at lynn at lindoyle.net. I'd love to hear your personal story. Tell me about your consequences and why you cheated. Good night.